three years ago when Dr. Maya Angelou uh, was in here in D.C., the National Portrait Gallery, about a month before she died, I had an interview with her, and uh, we were talking about teaching. And she said, Roland, you're a teacher. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm a journalist. She said, no, I watch you. You teach. The reality is we can use this medium for different purposes. We talk about information all of the time. And so with all of this talk about Confederate monuments and statues and what took place and I had a big uh, fight last night uh, with Joe Pagli Rulo, uh, a Republican conservative radio talk show host who insisted the Democratic Party was and still is a racist party, but he kept ignoring the Republican Party and their racist history, such as the Lily White movement. And so I invited Joe on this show because it was a waste of time to be on his radio show because he was just blabbering on and on. So Joe, when you want to have this debate, I'm here five days a week. Just pick a day and I'll be here to educate you. So we're gonna have, we have this new uh, segment, it's called The Truth About America. It will expose the lies and half-truths being taught in our schools that still promote white supremacy and give you a different perspective, as we say, his story and not history. So last week, we had a historian on talking about military bases named after Confederate generals. You know, the people who lost the Civil War? Yeah, so take this out, okay? According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, there are 10 army bases in America named after Confederate generals. Yes, United States Army bases. You know, the folks who actually won the Civil War, they're named after the people who lost the Civil War. There's Fort Rucker, named after General Edmund Rucker in Dale County, Alabama. Fort Benning is near Columbus, Georgia. It is named after General Henry L. Benning. Now near Augusta, Georgia is Fort Gordon, which honors Major General John Brown Gordon. Camp Beauregard gets its name from General P.G.T. Beauregard. It's located near Pineville, Louisiana. Also Louisiana is Fort Polk, named after General uh, Leonidas, uh, uh, Leonidas Polk. That was all jacked up. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Fort Bragg, and a lot of us know about Fort Bragg, one of our major army bases. Where is it located? Near Fayetteville, North Carolina. Named after Confederate General Braxton Bragg. Probably the most well-known army base in America. I know this well. It is in Killeen, Texas. It is called Fort Hood. It is named after Confederate General Bell Hood. Y'all, Fort Hood, now near Bowling Green, Virginia, is Fort A.P. Hill, named after General A.P. Hill. In Virginia, there are two military bases. Fort Lee is named after General Robert E. Lee, who was it from Virginia, and Fort Pickett, named after General George Pickett. But for all the dedication of these generals, according to history, these generals sucked. For example, General Braxton Bragg is considered among, one, among the worst generals of a civil war. He lost most of his battles, but many historians say Bragg placed a lot of blame on a subordinate, General Polk, who also has an army base named after him. So we got two generals who sucked, but we got bases named after them. General John Bell Hood made his mark in the civil war, but as he moved up the ranks, Historians say he became increasingly ineffective. He led his team through several defeats, most notably the Battle of Nashville. After that battle, he was replaced. What's even the point, so what's the point of naming these army bases after generals who sucked? I need y'all to understand what, what, what happened here. And that is, you had white racists, Dixiecrats in the United States Congress Yes, they were Southern Democrats. And what they did was, they said, we're going to name these bases after these generals. Republicans, who supposedly liked black people, the party founded to oppose slavery, went along with this. This is stuff you weren't told. And I can guarantee you that there are troops who are white, who are black, who are Hispanic, who are Asian, who are Native American, who are Muslim, who are Christian, who don't even know the bases they're serving on, 
who they are named after. This was all done by design. Let's go to Sir Michael Singleton, Tiffany Lofton, our panel. Again, perfect example, things being done in America, folks not knowing why they're done, to go, wow, 10 U.S. Army bases named after Confederate generals. Well, look, I, I think that, you know, as a conservative, people typically like to say, oh, conservatives don't like abrupt change. We like slow and steady change. And I think uh, if this is an, any inclination of anything, I think we have reached a point in time where people are becoming more interested in what is going on in our society, in our, in our society, in our culture, uh, what we truly represent. And I think it's obvious if people are saying these are things that we do not think are in sync with our values, with our ideals, ideals we should indeed change them. And I, and I think you're beginning to see many counties, municipalities, cities, uh, states are making the necessary changes. And as a conservative who believes in states' rights, et cetera, if the people are saying we no longer want these things because they don't represent who we are, take them down, change their names. I think that's reasonable. I think that's interesting, Roland, because um, it's not just the states that want those change. Inside of the states, there is a race battle that is currently taking place with folks who want to keep that legacy and keep those statues, and then the folks who want to take it down because it's obviously um, uh, crucial to their history and w what America is currently today. Um, there are a lot of things like this, and this is not the first time we've had a conversation around changing the name or tearing things down. We had that around the Edmund Pettus Bridge. There was a campaign to do that as well. There's textbooks, there's currency, there's um, schools that are named after uh, white supremacists. And so if America is doing a cultural shift and heading in the direction of we are going to remove those things, it is still important, I think, for us to recognize and not just erase the bad that has happened in America. That will not fix anything. But for us to have constructive, uh, educational, like you're doing now, Roland, conversations around what America has done to its people, how we got to where we are today, acknowledging that and then improving it for next time and for better. Um, I looked it up, Roland, and there are um, army bases that were named locally. That was a local prerogative. It was like, if we are in the city or in the state, we are going to name our army base. But now it is actually up to the secretary of the assistant and of the army, and they name those things as well. And if they're not educated and they're deciding what it is based off of, uh, uh, off of popularity and not actual history and the root of history, then we have a problem. And again, I need people to understand, you don't just name an army base. I mean, those are distinctions mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, that are approved by Congress. Mm -hmm. Congress authorized this. And this is the thing that people need to understand. Also, when you name something after somebody, that is deemed an honor. Yeah. Absolutely. When you have a post office, when you have a school, a, a, school, a building. Because what you're saying is that person's life and legacy is representative of right. the ideals we uphold. And right. what? folks did was they named army bases after confederate generals people who lost that was a reason why that was done all right and i think i mean to tiffany's point we we are certainly seeing a paradigm shift in our country good and, and, and i think it's a, it's it's a good thing and I, I think members of congress which who are in, uh, representative of the people Got it. the people are saying these things no longer represent who we are right we want to change you want to go in a different direction that is Got not it. to say erase history because we should most certainly learn however oh, yeah. we, we do pretend. need to continue to move uh, in a direction that yeah. is progressive uh, and not in the liberal sense. Take their damn name off. Uh, and when we say uh, moving, uh, not the progressive or liberal sense or the conservative sense, <laughs> the ni nice try, Sir Michael. You, you, you thought I didn't you catch that? You about to close it, and I was like, you, wait a minute. You, you thought I didn't catch that? I did. You thought I didn't catch that? Who the hell you think you're dealing with? This, I knew this, you this, were this, to commercial, and sorry, I was like, wait a minute. Sorry, this ain't CNN. Don't let that go. I, I really this thought you didn't catch that. This ain't no, CNN. It. This ain't CNN. Nice try. We days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensor. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got a fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.